to begin today, grab your 12 inch by 12 inch square watercolor paper that's for your mandala painting. You're going to begin by creating a half inch border on the watercolor paper. This will make your final mandala image 11 inches by 11 inches. What I recommend doing is that you measure a half an inch from the side of your watercolor paper three times. Then draw a straight line on those three dots and this will ensure that you will have a nice half inch even border throughout the entire portion of your watercolor paper. If you're wondering where a half an inch is, um, here on your ruler, this is from the end of the ruler to where this number one is, that's one inch. You'll notice that there is a second largest line. So this, that one inch line is the longest one. The second longest one is right smack dab in the middle. That is half of an inch because it's half of one inch. Once you've finished drawing a half inch border across your entire watercolor paper, place it over top of your big crescent board and then grab your masking tape and begin taping the paper to the board on all sides. Make sure you line up your tape with the border so the border is covered evenly all the way around. Once the board is set up, use your 4H pencil and ruler and find the center of the board on all sides. In this case, it should be about five and a half inches for the center. Now, if your paper is a little bit off, you're going to have to make those adjustments. But once you find that middle, draw a light crosshair on the paper. So you're really going to be making just like a plus sign through the center of your paper. And don't forget to measure the bottom and top portion of the paper so you know that that line you're drawing is going to be perfectly perpendicular with the other horizontal line that we've previously drawn. Next, measure two inches and a quarter from the corner of each part of the paper in all directions. So measure in two inches and a quarter from the left-hand side and then also two inches and a quarter on the right-hand side. Do this step for all four sides of your watercolor paper. To look for two inches and a quarter from the end of your ruler, you go all the way to where you find two inches and then you look for that quarter line. Notice there's one, two, three, four of those in an inch. So it would be two inches and one quarter. And that's how far in you would measure on your ruler from the corner of the paper. So two inches and a quarter. You would go all the way to this line to make your mark. Once you've measured in two inches and a quarter from all of your corners, line up each mark with its corresponding mark on the opposite side of the board. Make sure that this line is going through the center of your plus sign each time. If it doesn't, then that tells you that your plus sign was drawn inaccurately and you're going to need to go back and adjust that measurement. Now comes the fun part of the design. So take one of your pieces of tracing paper, put it over top of your favorite sketch that you drew. Using your ruler, trace over the diagonal lines on either side of your sketch. After you do this, begin tracing over that sketch directly on top of the tracing paper. After you've finished tracing over your design, take it to your watercolor paper and flip that tracing paper over. Line it up with one of your triangular sections and begin tracing over that design. The graphite on the other side of the tracing paper is going to be transferred onto your watercolor paper because you're pressing that graphite on. You should be using an HB pencil to do this. If you use your 4H pencil, you'll notice that the marks will be really light and it's not going to transfer very easily. So the HB pencil is going to be the appropriate one to use. You're going to have to keep flip-flopping your tracing paper from one triangle to the next. So notice I'm flipping my tracing paper again and I'm lining it up with the edge of my previous tracing. You may notice that in some triangles, that triangle image that you have on your tracing paper may not fit within your triangle. You may go over the edges a little bit or may not reach the edges depending on how uh, big your paper was cut. So you're going to have to make adjustments as you go, and that's okay. Just make sure that things on the like intersecting lines between one triangle and the other, just make sure that all of your lines inter uh, connect so we don't have like this like jumbled mess where our lines don't flow easily into one another. 
After checking to make sure that your lines from one section to another match up with another section, then you can begin modifying your drawing. If you have lots of straight lines in your work like I do, you need to go over all of your lines with a ruler. If you have lots of curvilinear lines, go back over your lines with some French curves that you can get from the classroom, or if you're a cyber student, use rounded objects like bowls and cups that you may have laying around your house to help trace over your curvilinear lines just to make them look more professional. You'll notice that the more times I go over these lines with a ruler, the cleaner and neater my work is going to look. This is what elevates a really okay looking painting to one that is absolutely fantastic. When you, if you want your painting to really stand out and look amazing, then you need to do this stage because working and perfecting your watercolor at every stage of the process is just going to end up with, with better, more amazing results. So trace over your drawing, get everything um, looking nice and clean, and then you should be ready to paint it tomorrow.